Let's talk about how companies use stock to compensate worldwide employees. In this video, I'm going to cover three trends in global equity incentives. Trend number one is that where companies have a worldwide equity program, they tend to grant the same equity vehicle everywhere. You can see in my chart that if a company grants time-based full value awards in its headquarter country, chances are that when it grants equity outside of headquarters, it also grants time-based full value awards. The one exception to this is performance-based awards. Companies are considerably less likely to offer performance-based awards outside of their headquarters country. I think this is because for the most part, performance-based awards are only granted to very senior level executives. And many companies just don't have senior level executives outside of their headquarters. This trend of using the same equity vehicle everywhere, uh, it holds true even in countries where it would be to the employee's advantage for the company to offer a different type of equity vehicle. For example, in Canada, uh, stock options in Canada can qualify for preferential tax treatment, and that treatment can really represent a pretty significant tax savings for employees. But that often is not enough for companies to switch to stock options in Canada. For example, if a company offers RSUs in its headquarters country, chances are it's going to offer RSUs to its employees in Canada, even though it would be to their advantage to receive stock options. Trend number two is that less than half of companies adjust award sizes based on employee location. For time-based full value awards and stock options, only 44% of companies adjust the award size based on where the recipient is located. And for performance-based awards, that percentage drops to 28%. Again, I think because performance-based awards tend to go to highly paid employees. Where companies do adjust award sizes by location, the top three criteria for those adjustments are the pay practices in the jurisdiction where the employee is located, the relative wage levels in that jurisdiction, and then also the employee's job code or description. Trend number three is that we really just do not see a lot of tax qualified plans. In my map here, I have included a marker in the countries where we are more likely to see tax qualified plans. Those countries include the US, Canada, France, Belgium, and Israel. But even in those countries where tax qualified plans are more common, it's still often less than half or less than a third of companies with employees in those countries that offer those plans. One notable trend is that when a company has more than a thousand employees in a country, they are more likely to offer a tax qualified plan if one is available. So those are my three trends in global equity incentives. All of the data I've presented here today are findings from the 2021 Global Equity Incentives Survey, which is co-sponsored by the NASPP and Deloitte Consulting. And if you want even more trends, be sure to check out our webcast on this topic. If you enjoyed my video today, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you are notified when we post new videos. Heck, even if you didn't enjoy it, subscribe anyway. Maybe you'll like the next one. Thanks for watching.